What's the Big Value Penguins? Today we're going to do 2016 number seven on Mies, test grass, and linkage. No certain species of plant is a diploid number of chromosomes is four, meaning that there are two of chromosome one and two of chromosome two. Flower color is controlled by a single gene, in which the green allele is dominant to the purple allele. Purple height is controlled by a different gene, in which the dwarf allele is dominant to the tall allele. Individuals of the parental genotype of homozygous dominant of both traits and homozygous recessive for both traits were cross produced the F1 progeny. We have to construct a diagram to depict the four possible products of meiosis that would be produced by the F1 progeny. Show the chromosomes and the alleles they carry. Assume the genes are located on different chromosomes and the gene for a flower color is on chromosome one. The first thing I have to do is just think, okay, well, what is our F1? So I'm crossing a homozygous dominant with a homozygous recessive, which means that all the offspring are going to be heterozygous. So since that occurs for both traits, this is going to be a dihybrid. So heterozygous for the color allele and heterozygous for the tall allele, or I'm sorry, for the height allele. So since I'm trying to draw the proximiosis, I need to put one chromosome for each of them into each of the cells. So I'll have one of chromosome one and one of chromosome two in each of my cells. Then I have to think to myself, okay, during uh, meiosis, we go through independent assortment. And so in terms of independent assortment, you're going to have, maybe you could have where the two dominant alleles are on one side with the two recessive alleles. So when they segregate, you end up with two dominants and two recessives. Or you can see where the dominant allele would be on one side for like, say, the G, and the dominant allele for the D to be on the other side, which means recessive and recessive. And so you'll get four different combinations. So we'll put two of the Gs and of two of the capital Gs in two cells and two of the lowercase Gs in the other two cells. And then because of the independent assortment, we'll put the capital D for the capital G and a capital D with a lowercase g. And the same thing with our lowercase Ds. We'll put one with the capital G and one with the lowercase G, giving us our four different combinations. So in terms of the point, you had to have one of chromosome one, one of chromosome two, and then you had to have the appropriate different combination. And that is what our student did. So on B, we have to predict the possible phenotypes and their ratio in the offspring of a test cross between the F1 individual and a homozygous recessive um, individual. And so since we are crossing a dihybrid with the homozygous recessive, um, we're going to go and we'll do two different crosses because we're looking at two different traits. Um, so first we'll cross the color. So green crosses purple will give me half purple and half green. And if I cross tall, I'm sorry, dwarf with tall, then I'm going to get one half dwarf and one half tall. But I'm not done. I have to put these two traits together, which means I'm going to have to multiply them. So for green dwarf, I'll do one half times one half, which gives me one fourth. Green tall, one half times one half, which gives me one fourth. Purple dwarf, which gives me one half times one half, which gives me one fourth. And purple tall is one half times one half, which is one fourth. Okay, so you're just multiplying the ratio for the green with the ratio of the dwarf to be able to get green dwarf and so on and so forth for all those four. Okay, so our ratio we would have is a one to one to one to one ratio. Remember to write this in a complete sentence. So that is what our student did. Okay, they have went through, they showed their Punnett squares. Um, and the big thing they had to get to was the phenotypes with the ratio. Um, and since students were having trouble writing this in complete sentences, I think they got a little lax and they might have given you credit on this one. So, if, ooh, I apparently left the, the answer there. If the two genes are genetically linked, describe how the proportion of the phenotypes of the resulting offspring would most likely differ for those of the test cross between F1 individual and the homozygous recessive individual. Well, considering the fact that they're going to be linked, that means that the tall allele will be together with the purple allele and the green allele would be with the dwarf allele. And so when we went through independent assortment, those would stay together because they're on the same chromosome. But due to crossing over, we would find some crossing over that would allow for the exchanging of that genetic information. So I would expect most of the offspring to look like the parental. So most of them would be green dwarf or purple tall, but there could be small. So I'm going to say less than 25% will be green tall and less than 25% will be purple dwarf because originally we had 25% of all of those. Um, so the student's answer, if the green were linked, then there would be a lot more, I'm sorry, if the genes were linked, there would be a lot more green dwarf and purple tall in the resulting offspring of F1 and homozygous dominant, I mean, homozygous recessive. And the phenotype ratio wouldn't be one to one to one to one. It would have two phenotypes and a large pro proportion to the other two. So I hope that was helpful. Remember, AP Biopay was addressed success. Bye, y'all.